okay here we are going to discuss on the rotational fine structure of electronic spectra a rotational fine structure we already learned the vibrational chord structure vibrational vibrational uh, chord structure you know how the vibrational chord structure is developed in the rotational spectrum so during an electronic excitation means when the molecule is making a transition from a ground electronic state to a higher electronic state e dash okay or e from the transition from e double prime to e prime during this transition actually we should expect a single line corresponding to this energy difference between e prime and e double prime that is what we have to expect normally but different from that we will get a series of lines and these series of lines are originating because of the fact that each electronic state will further consist of several vibrational states right each electronic state will consist of several vibrational states and during an electronic excitation the molecule will be making a transition from a particular vibrational level in the ground electronic state to a particular vibrational level in the upper electronic state that is why corresponding to uh, corresponding to several transitions we will get a series of lines and this series of lines are called vibrational chord structure or progression that we already learned in the previous class okay so if you are looking into a spectrum you will see the lines like this right the lines in like this if you are looking into a spectrum and these lines are convergent it means that in the order of the increasing frequency you can see that the lines will come closer and closer okay so this is the vibrational chord structure we did we discussed this in detail and today we are going to look further into the fine structure of these lines also so if you are examining one of these lines if you are picking one of these lines from the vibrational chord structure okay and then if you are examining this closer or if you are looking a high resolution spectrum of this one you can see that each of these each of these lines in the vibrational chord structure are further split into several lines okay each of these lines in the progression or vibrational chord structure is further split into several lines and this is due to the fact that each vibrational state will have different rotational states inside okay or within each vibrational level there will be many rotational levels and during the uh, the transition from one particular vibrational level here in this lower electronic state to another uh, vibrational level in the higher electronic state accompanying that accompanying the, with that transition there will be a rotational transition also okay and it is because of this rotational transition several lines are appearing within each of these lines in the vibrational chord structure okay and this is called a rotational fine structure rotational rotational fine structure so when you are examining the 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 electronic spectrum of a molecule for example we are considering the diatomic molecules because that will present the simplest case right and if you are looking into the electronic spectroscopy of this kinds of molecules you will see that the 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 line appearing due to the electronic excitation that will not be a line of course that will appear as a band within that there will be several lines and these several lines are due to the vibrational chord structure and within that vibrational chord structure if you are examining a particular line and that line will further consist of several other lines and these lines are due to the rotational transition and these simplest lines or these finest lines are called the rotational fine structure okay and in this class we are going to see how this rotational fine structure will arise that is our discussion point and uh, we already know that within a molecule there will be electronic levels and the separation between the electronic levels are very high right that will be in the range of the ultraviolet or uh, visible light in the electromagnetic spectrum it's a, a huge difference between these two electronic states okay 
and within that electronic states there will be several vibrational levels see several vibrational levels will be there like this so if any if you are checking each of the electronic levels there will be several vibrational levels in each of these okay the difference between these vibrational level one or two vibrational or consecutive vibrational levels okay that will come in the range of the ir uh, electromagnetic radiation okay but if you are going from here to here from one electronic state to the other electronic state from here to here then the energy difference is in the range of uv or visible okay but if you are checking the energy difference between two successive vibrational states here that will be the range of ir okay if you are checking the energy difference between these vibration levels here okay so okay these vibration levels are another set of vibration level in the upper electronic state these energy difference are also in the range of ir radiation okay but if you are making a transition from this vibrational level to this vibrational level means a vibration level in the ground electronic state a vibration level in the upper electronic state that will take a radiation which will have the energy equivalent to or equal to uv or visible range okay so that you have to consider that, that you have to understand and within these vibrational levels within these vibration levels you know that there are several several rotational levels also so each vibration level will consist of rotational levels okay so when a molecule is making an electronic transition what will happen what will happen you we already know that during an electronic transition there will be a vibrational change and since there are several rotational levels within a vibrational state there will be an accompanying rotational change also so you can suppose the 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 molecule starts the transition from this level okay so this this is a an electronic state electronic level so this is an electronic level ground electronic level within that there is a vibrational level this is that vibrational level within that there is a rotational level and this molecule is sitting there and the molecule is making a transition from there to the next electronic state absorbing the uv visible radiation okay and it is making a transition like this and it reaches here so it reaches the upper electronic state within that there is a vibrational state and within that there is a rotational state okay and so here we know that the total energy total energy of the molecule actually depends upon the electronic energy level vibrational energy level and rotational energy level okay so we can write e total e total is equal to e total is equal to e electronic plus e vibrational plus e rotational right and uh, we already considered the consequence of uh, uh, the consequence of uh, considering together the electronic and vibrational levels that will lead to the vibrational chord structure and today we will count this one also e rotational okay this is in centimeter inverse you already know this because it is written epsilon so today we will consider this rotational energy also so if we consider the rotational energy then we will uh, get the information on the rotational fine structure and you already know that the expression for the rotational energy is e rotational or epsilon rotational is equal to h divided by 8 pi square ic j into j plus 1 j into j plus 1 centimeter inverse right and you can consider this h divided by 8 pi square ic as b which is the rotational constant so you can write this expression as epsilon rotational e is equal to b j into j plus 1 centimeter inverse here b is called the rotational constant and it is in centimeter inverse okay and here j is a rotational quantum number you already know this because we have already learned the rotational spectroscopy here j is a rotational quantum number and it can have the values like 0 1 2 3 etc right and uh, yeah uh, all other things you already know this i is the moment of inertia in this expression i is the moment of inertia okay and c is the velocity of light h is the planck's constant you already know all these parameters so we have the expression for the rotational energy in centimeter inverse okay 
and we will we are going to substitute this uh, expression for the rotational energy in our en expression for the total energy and then we will get some information of the rotational fine structure and uh, here actually we have taken an approximation uh, which is known as born oppenheimer approximation we already discussed with this several times in spectroscopy and also in quantum mechanics and here the total energy of the molecule is the arithmetic sum of the electronic energy vibrational energy and rotational energy and we can write this because if we consider the electronic energy is independent of the vibrational energy which is again independent of the rotational energy then only we can consider like this okay if they are dependent we cannot we cannot take this as the, the the sum of the electronic energy vibration and rotation energy because there will be some some other terms uh, of interaction of this energy those terms also should be considered but here we are not considering that okay so that is called the born oppenheimer approximation we have already learned this that is why i am not going to the details of that and here <coughs> the change in the energy during a transition okay this is the energy the total energy of the molecule when the molecule is here okay it has a electronic energy it has a vibrational energy it has a rotational energy and then it is making an electronic transition it means that it is reaching the higher electronic state within that there is a vibrational state within that there is a rotational state okay so there will be another e total when it reaches the higher electronic state so what will be the difference in energy between these two states when this transition occurs okay and that can be represented as uh, delta e total delta e total which is equal to delta e electronic plus delta e vibrational plus delta e rotational okay so here <coughs> we can write it again like delta e total delta e total is equal to delta of delta of e electronic sorry e electronic delta of e electronic plus e vibrational okay plus delta of e rotational delta of e rotational is delta of uh, b j into j plus 1 okay that is the expression for the rotational energy bj into j plus 1 here you have to consider that we are considering this molecule as a rigid rotor that is an approximation only actually the molecules are not rigid rotors uh, there will be some centrifugal distortion during the rotation we have already learned this in rotation spectroscopy but here for convenience we are neglecting the centrifugal distortion that will make the terms simpler and that will make our calculation simpler that is so that is an approximation and the reality is not close to that but we you know that for lower rotation energy levels okay the centrifugal distortion distortion is very negligible so this approximation is okay this approximation is okay at least for the low rotational levels okay and therefore let us let us continue with this approximation that the molecule is a rigid rotor or the centrifugal distortion can be uh, neglected okay and uh, therefore let us <coughs> uh, when we are considering that this is a rigid rotor actually there will be no vibration so actually we are considering these are the rigid rotor we are just neglecting the centrifugal distortion uh just for the simple uh, the, the easiness of the calculation that's all okay you know what is the consequence of saying that the molecule is a rigid rotor if the molecule is a rigid rotor then its internuclear distance is not going to change if the internuclear distance is not going to change vibration will not happen but here we are considering that this molecule this rotational level is within a vibrational level therefore we cannot uh, plainly say that it is a rigid rotor because that will uh, give some wrong implications that the molecule will not vibrate so let me be very clear that we are just uh, neglecting the centrifugal distortion the 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 effect of centrifugal distortion just for the simplification of calculation that is the better thing to say okay okay and therefore 
delta e total is equal to delta e electronic plus e vibrational plus delta bj into j plus 1 centimeter inverse all these are in centimeter inverse that is why we have written this in epsilon okay and that is a changing energy during an electronic transition okay and uh, what will be the, the 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 wave number of the line corresponding to this electronic transition because this energy is expressed in centimeter inverse that is a unit of the wave number therefore whatever you are getting here for the delta i whatever value you are getting here for the delta i total that will be the value of the wave number corresponding to that transition so we can write it like new bar spectroscopic new bar spectroscopic that is equal to delta of e electronic plus e vibration what is that here we are considering the difference in energy of the electronic and vibrational energy together that will give the wave number of a line in the vibrational coil structure because in vibrational coil structure we consider it, there is an electronic transition accompanied by that there is a vibrational transition so they we will get a series of line okay series of lines and the wave number of those series of lines will be obtained from this one delta of e electronic plus e vibrational so this this expression that is delta of e electronic plus e vibrational is nothing but the wave number of the lines in the progression or wave number of lines in the vibrational coil structure okay so there are several lines in the vibrational coil structure and those lines will be determined by the vibrational content number in the lower electronic state and the upper electronic state okay so you can you can consider any set of vibrational quantum numbers here and you suppose that we are considering the vibrational quantum numbers in the lower level as v prime and uh, the v double prime and the vibrational quantum number in the upper level as v double prime okay then corresponding to that we will get one line okay and the wave number of that line is nu bar v prime v double prime v prime v double prime this indicates that this is a particular line in the vibrational progression or vibrational cross structure for example it can be like 0 uh, 0 okay or it can be 1 0 2 0 line 3 0 line etc in the vibrational cross structure so it can be any line that depends upon which vibrational quantum number you are considering you can consider any set of vibrational quantum numbers in the lower electronic state and upper electronic state and depending upon which vibrational quantum number you are choosing uh, you will get a particular wave number and that wave number is nu bar v prime v double prime okay that is a wave number of a particular line in the vibrational coil structure plus plus delta o bj into j plus one okay bj into j plus one delta of bj bj into j plus one okay so <coughs> here we have an expression for the wave number of the spectroscopic line okay wave number of the spectroscopic line and here j can have several values and corresponding to these several values we will get a different wave numbers okay that will give the idea of the rotational fine structure and uh, further we can expand this uh, uh, this uh, this uh, uh, expression because delta of bj into j plus 1 it means that delta of bj into j that is bj into j plus of the upper level bj into j plus 1 of the upper electronic level minus bj into j plus 1 of the lower electronic level okay in spectroscopy we have the convention of giving double prime to the lower level and uh, single prime to the upper level so we can write it like uh, nu bar spectroscopic is equal to nu bar v prime v double prime plus b b prime j prime into j prime plus one okay that is the uh, that is the rotational energy in the upper electronic state 
minus the rotational energy in the lower electronic state that is b double prime j double prime into j double prime plus 1 okay so that is the rotation energy in the lower electronic state okay centimeter inverse so this will give clearly the 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 wave number of the lines in the spectrum of uh, spectrum when an electronic transition happens accompanied by a vibrational transition which is further accompanied by a rotational transition here we have to give different values for j prime and j double prime then we, we, corresponding to those different values we will get a different new bar values but which are the values of the j prime and j double prime how this difference is governed that depends upon the selection rule we have to say from which rotational level to which rotational level it is quantum mechanically allowed to make a transition that is a selection rule right we cannot make a transition from any rotational level to any other rotational level that will be governed by the quantum mechanics okay so here the selection rule is that selection rule selection rule here is that is depending upon uh, the, the 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 type of electronic transition okay there are different types of electronic transition the selection rule depends upon the types of electronic transition first of all we have to consider that if the upper and lower electronic states are are sigma one states sigma one states upper and lower electronic states are sigma one state it means that sigma one state means in this state no electronic angular momentum about the internuclear axis okay in this electronic state there will be no electronic angular momentum about the internuclear axis no electronic angular momentum angular momentum about about the internuclear axis internuclear axis then we can say that that is a sigma one state and you suppose that the lower electronic state and the upper electronic state both are sigma one states okay in, in it means that in lower electronic state there is no electronic angular momentum about the internuclear axis and same is the case with upper electronic state also and then both are sigma 1 states so if it is a sigma 1 to sigma 1 transition that is sigma 1 in the lower electronic state to sigma 1 in the upper electronic state okay if this is the nature of the electronic transition then the selection rule is that delta j is equal to plus or minus 1 okay plus or minus 1 this is a selection rule so the selection rule depends upon the type of electronic transition and if the electronic transition is of the type sigma 1 to sigma 1 okay then the selection rule is delta j is equal to plus or minus 1 delta j is equal to plus 1 means what is the meaning of delta j is equal to plus 1 delta j is equal to plus 1 plus 1 means plus 1 okay it means j prime minus j double prime means a rotational quantum number in the upper level minus rotational quantum number in the lower electronic level j prime minus j double prime is equal to plus one plus one then we can say that it is delta j is equal to plus one and delta j is equal to minus one means the rotational quantum number in the upper level that is upper electronic level j prime minus rotational quantum number in the lower electronic prime, electronic level j double prime is equal to minus one then we can say that it is delta j is equal to minus one only these two types of transitions are allowed that is a selection rule here if the electronic transition is following the sigma one to sigma one transition okay delta j is equal to plus one or delta j is equal to minus one delta j is equal to plus one can you say an example of the delta j is equal to plus one transition it means that when the electronic when the electronic transition occurs there will be an accompanying rotational transition and during this rotational transition one number is getting increased that is why it is say that delta j is equal to plus one means it is a transition from j double prime is equal to zero to j double prime is equal to one 
और जे डबल प्राइम इज इक्वल टू वन टू जे जे डबल प्राइम इज इक्वल टू जीरो टू जे प्राइम इज इक्वल टू वन ओके दिस जे प्राइम एंड जे डबल प्राइम इज इक्वल टू वन टू जे डबल प्राइम इज इक्वल टू टू ऑल दिस आर डेल्टा जे इज इक्वल टू प्लस वन ट्रांसेशन एंड वट इज डेल्टा जे इज इक्वल टू माइनस वन ट्रांसेशन जे डबल प्राइम इज इक्वल टू वन टू जे प्राइम इज इक्वल टू जीरो ओके जे डबल प्राइम इज अ रोटेशनल लेवल इन द लोअर इलेक्ट्रॉनिक स्टेट suppose it is 1 and then it is making a transition to a rotational level in the upper electronic state there the rotational quantum number is 0 then we can say that this is delta j is equal to minus 1 transition okay so these two types of transition can occur if it is a sigma 1 to sigma 1 electronic transition okay so this is one selection rule this is a selection rule number 1 and now we can consider the the next case it means that it means that uh, the the electronic angular momentum about the internuclear axis has some some value some positive value okay so in that case it is it's some non zero value okay earlier we considered that the electronic angular momentum about the internuclear axis is zero and here we are considering that the electronic angular momentum about the internuclear axis has some non zero value okay if the transition is that type means if the if the when the transition takes place if the lower electronic state lower electronic state or upper electronic state upper electronic state or both okay or both if they have the electronic angular momentum about the internuclear axis as a non zero value then the selection rule is different okay electronic angular momentum electronic angular momentum is a non zero value about the internuclear axis then the selection rule is different so it is not required that both the upper level and lower level how to have the non zero electronic angular momentum is not required either the upper level or the lower level or both okay in all these cases the selection rule is different here the selection rule is that delta j delta j is equal to zero or or plus or minus 1 okay these are the selection rules either delta j is equal to zero or plus or minus 1 delta j is equal to zero means j double prime is equal to 1 to j double j prime is equal to 1 that is delta j is equal to 0 or j double prime is equal to 2 to j prime is equal to 2 j double prime is equal to 3 to j prime is equal to 3 all these are delta j is equal to 0 what about j prime j double prime is equal to 0 to j prime is equal to 0 is that delta j is 0 yes that is also delta j is 0 but this possibility is excluded from the selection rule okay so even if it is delta j is equal to 0 you should not consider this possibility delta j double prime is equal to 0 to j prime is equal to 0 this transition is not allowed all other delta j is equal to 0 transitions are allowed or the next one is delta j is equal to plus or minus 1 you know the types of transitions of delta j is equal to plus 1 and delta j is equal to minus 1 it is 0 to 1 1 to 2 3 to 4 4 to 5 etc or 1 to 0 2 to 1 3 to 2 4 to 3 etc then it is delta j is equal to minus 1 okay so these are the selection rules now we already know what is selection rule here okay that selection rule depends upon the electronic transition and now now we are going to consider the 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 the, the electronic transitions according to these selection rules okay we will consider the electronic transitions according to these selection rules and let us consider delta j is equal to plus 1 transitions okay delta j is equal to uh, plus 1 transitions if it is delta j is equal to plus 1 transition delta j sorry delta j 
is equal to plus 1 transitions. Transitions. If it is delta j is equal to plus 1 transitions, you already know that delta j is equal to plus 1 transition will lead to a series of line because we already learned this uh, <coughs> in the vibrational rotation spectrum. Okay, that will lead to a series of lines and uh, delta j is equal to plus 1 series of lines are called uh, R branch. Okay, R branch, R branch. And delta j is equal to minus 1 transitions, transitions are responsible to p branch of the spectrum, p branch of the spectrum. And delta j is equal to 0 transitions are responsible for the q branch, q branch of the spectrum. Okay. So, I just named this and we will see the details of this uh, p branch, r branch, p branch and uh, q branch. Okay. P, Q and R branches. Here, you some students may be confused of this delta J is equal to minus 1 transition. Some few students get confused that this is a de-excitation process. Actually, it is not. All these are excitation processes. Means, oh, during all these uh, types of transitions, the, the the molecule is getting excited from the ground electronic state to the higher electronic state. I will show you uh, a, a, a few examples of this delta J is equal to plus 1 transition, delta J is equal to minus 1 and delta J is equal to 0 transition. So, let us consider uh, a ground electronic state. This is a ground electronic state. Within that ground electronic state, there are several vibrational states. Okay, several vibrational states. And I am not considering all the vibrational states. Only a few vibrational states I am considering. And there is an upper electronic state here. And within that upper electronic state, there will be vibrational states also. Okay. And we are picking only a few vibrational states. For example, this is the V double prime is equal to zero vibrational state in the lower electronic state. So, this is the lower electronic state. All these vibrational states are within the lower electronic state. So, let me represent this as epsilon double prime. And this is the upper electronic state. Okay. So, it is epsilon prime. And uh, within that epsilon electronic, uh, uh, within that upper electronic uh, state, there are vibrational levels like V prime is equal to 0. V prime is equal to 1 and V prime is equal to 2, etc. Here also we have 1, 2, etc. All levels are not shown here. Okay. So, you have to consider here that this is a lower electronic state. This is the upper electronic state altogether. And the molecule is making a migration or transition from one of these vibrational states within the lower electronic state. And now we know that within these vibration states, there are a number of rotational levels also. So, let me draw the rotational levels here. In this V prime is equal to uh, 0 level. Okay. I am going to draw the rotational levels. And uh, I am going to draw a few rotational levels. This is one rotational level. This is another rotational level. This is another rotational level. I am go not going to draw all the rotational levels. Okay. The scaling is not accurate here. This is just for the representational purpose. And I am going to draw the rotation levels in this vibration level also. Okay, here is one, one is here, and one is here, one is here, etc. Okay, and here also we have the rotation levels one, two, three, four. Here also within this vibration level, one, two, three, four rotation level. Actually, we have to count from zero. Okay, so these are j is equal to zero, one, two, three. Again, J is equal to 0, 1, 2, 3, etc. Okay. Here also J is equal to 0, 1, 2, 3. 0, 1, 2, 3. Okay. Within each vibration level, there are a number of rotation levels. And you suppose that the molecule is making a transition from here. From J is equal to 0 here. J is equal to 0 here to j is equal to 1 here. Okay, so this is j is equal to 1. If that is a transition from 0 to 1, then it is called a delta j is equal to plus 1 transition. So, this is a delta j is equal to delta j is equal to plus 1 transition. This is delta j is equal to 
plus 1 transition. So, it is from 0 to 1. This is an excitation process, right? Energy is absorbed and then it is getting up to here. And now, what is delta J is equal to minus 1 transition? Delta J is equal to minus 1 transition means you suppose a transition from J is equal to 1 level here. This is J is equal to 1. It is starting from J is equal to 1 and ending up in J is equal to 0. Okay? In any level. See, that is J is equal to 0 level. And here it is started from J is equal to or J, J in this case we can call it J double prime. J double prime is equal to 1 to J prime is equal to 0. And that is delta J is equal to minus 1 transition. So this is delta J, this is delta J is equal to delta J is equal to minus 1 transition. Is it a de excitation? No. Actually the molecule is here initially. And it is jumping to a higher level. That is also an excitation. Even if it is making a delta J is equal to minus 1 transition. So, never confuse that. by by Just by seeing delta J is equal to minus 1, you should not confuse that. This is a de-excitation process. No. It is also an excitation process. It is migrating or it is making a transition from the lower electronic state to the higher electronic state. It has to absorb some UV light or visible light to do this process. Okay. So, it is an excitation process itself even if it is delta J is equal to minus 1. And you know that delta J is equal to 0 transition. Delta J is equal to 0 transition means, for example, it is making a transition from J is equal to 1 to J is equal to 1. Okay. J is equal to 1 to J is equal to 1. So, that is delta J is equal to 0 transition delta j 1 to 1 so that is delta j is equal to zero transition that is also an excitation process it is uh, absorbing this much energy to get from here to here right it has to absorb energy so that is also an excitation process okay so all these are electronic excitation process even if it is delta j is equal to plus one minus one or zero okay and uh, now we know uh, the, 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 the type of uh, electronic transitions accompanied by the rotational transition and we know that certain transitions will lead to P branch and certain other transition will lead to R branch and certain other transitions will lead to Q branch. Okay, And in the next video, we will learn in detail the origin of this P, Q and R branch in the R branches in the rotational fine structure of the electronic spectrum. And uh, thank you for watching. And stay tuned.